Welcome to Secrets of the Great. Built around 2550 BCE, the Great Pyramid of Giza is considered one of the most iconic structures of Egypt. It is the biggest of the pyramids and the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world still standing. The numbers associated to the Great Pyramid of Giza are impressive. A workforce of over 20,000 people, 6 million tons of stone, and 20 years of construction. It was a massive undertaking for a pharaoh's tomb. The construction of the Great Pyramid was also a display of power and opulence on the part of Khufu. It is part of the pharaoh's vast funerary complex, which also includes two temples, three satellite pyramids, a causeway, and a builder's necropolis. We can guess that the intent behind the construction of these monuments was Khufu's way of declaring himself one of the most powerful pharaohs to rule a unified Egypt. New insights into engineering and ancient Egyptian culture are still being revealed over 4,500 years later. For example, a recently unearthed papyrus offers a glimpse into the life of a tradesman at the time of the pyramid's construction. Also, a logbook belonging to a team leader during the building gives details on the craftsmen, their work schedules, and the raw materials required. It is interesting to note that by Cleopatra's time, the pyramid's celestial purpose, its construction, and the function of its mysterious inner chambers was already unclear. Today, it is only through dedicated research that we have begun to grasp some of the Great Pyramid's mysteries. The Egyptians had polished their design for centuries by the time work on the Great Pyramid began. Intended as a tomb for Khufu, the Great Pyramid's structural design has been considered to be nearly perfect by engineers and historians ever since. Precisely oriented north-south to the four cardinal points of a compass, the length of each side of the Great Pyramid at its base was 230 meters, and its original height was 147 meters. The pyramid is a mere 0.05% error away from being a perfect square. In order to achieve the shape of a true pyramid, the design required many considerations in the planning phases as well as precision during execution. It was especially critical that they control the angle of inclination on all sides at every stage of construction. Materials for the Great Pyramid consisted of quarried limestone blocks weighing between 2 to 15 tons each. The methods of moving these blocks into place is still debated by architects and Egyptologists. The precision of its design in an age with only soft metal tools, as well as the enormous scale of its construction, make the Great Pyramid one of the most impressive feats of human engineering. It's estimated that it took between 600,000 and 2 million blocks of stone to build the Great Pyramid. Experts calculate it would have required men to move 12 blocks every hour around the clock for 20 years to place the 2.3 million stones the monument is made of.
While the interior chambers were built with red granite from a swan, most of the pyramid was made from local limestone, weighing between 2 to 15 tons per block. There is debate on how the pyramid stones were moved into place. Recent research is exploring the idea that it was built around a large interior ramp. The recently discovered logbook confirms that the high quality limestone of the outer casing was brought by boat across the Nile from a quarry in Tura. Once complete, the smooth white polished stone of the Great Pyramid would have reflected the sunlight like a beacon, earning it the name the Horizon of Khufu. Over the centuries, thieves and travelers attempted to access the Great Pyramid numerous times. Ancient writings describe details of its interior, proof that some made their way within, though who gained entrance first and when is unknown. The main entrance of the Great Pyramid is located 17 meters above ground level. It faces north, likely in order to align with the North Star. Though the entrance passageway had been discovered in antiquity, any further access into the Great Pyramid was stopped by massive vertical slabs of rock. As such, present-day visitors to the pyramid must use the robber's entrance. The robber's entrance is reported to have been opened in the 9th century by Caliph al-Mamun. In search of treasure, the Caliph had his men dig their way inside the Great Pyramid. The most likely scenario is that they enlarged a corridor which had been created by tomb robbers during antiquity. As such, this is how the team can justify access to this wonder. Attempts to gain entry to the Great Pyramid and uncover its potential secrets continued throughout the centuries. In the 19th century, the belief that another entry existed at the south side resulted in a hole being blasted into the pyramid's side, with no results for the damage that was done. While the search is still ongoing today to uncover more hidden rooms and passageways, conservation is the primary concern of all such efforts. Welcome to the Great Pyramid of Giza, Upper Chambers. At the entrance of the ascending passage are three granite flagstones estimated to weigh up to 25 tons each. They were used to protect the Great Pyramid from thieves. Undaunted by the granite blocks, the thieves simply dug into the softer limestone around them, thus creating the robber's entrance. While in reality the robber's entrance is one single cavity which leads to both passages, in the game, the team created individual accesses to either passage. As such, in the game, one entrance leads to the ascending passage while another leads to the descending passage. The ascending passageway of the Great Pyramid provides a direct path into the Grand Gallery and is accessed 30 meters from the entrance along the descending corridor. Both corridors have similar dimensions and are designed with the same 26-degree incline. 
The ascending corridor has smooth masonry on its walls, and the layout includes many trapezoidal stones. Both the floor and ceiling of the passageway indicate that the passage was enlarged, possibly during or after the funeral, to allow workers room to move granite blocks meant to plug the corridor. The Grand Gallery's purpose is still debated among experts. It may have been intended to align with the stars, act as a buffer to protect the king's chamber, or simply to facilitate the transport of the granite blocks used inside the pyramid. Access to the queen's chamber was at the beginning of the Grand Gallery. Though this room is referred to as the Queen's Chamber, it is believed that there was no queen buried here. Based on their knowledge of earlier pyramids, Egyptologists believe it was more likely intended as the King's Serdab, a chamber meant to contain the Ka statue, which would in turn house the King's spirit. Situated exactly within the pyramid's center, on the east-west axis of the pyramid, the chamber has a vaulted ceiling and measures 5.7 by 5.2 meters. In the eastern wall, there is a niche tucked away in a small corbelled archway, which may have originally held the Ka statue. Behind this niche is another smaller hole, possibly dug out by thieves in search of further treasure. In the 19th century, two shafts were found running through the north and south walls. They each run in a horizontal line for two meters before sloping upward, and both are closed off with limestone blocks fitted with copper handles. Whether they were intended as ventilation shafts for workers or a celestial connection for the pharaoh's spirit is unconfirmed. A recent scan of the room indicated the presence of an unknown cavity hidden behind the north face of the walls over the descending corridor. Further investigation is still ongoing to ascertain the nature of the anomaly so as to avoid risking damage to the monument. Khufu's architects were possibly influenced by earlier rhomboidal pyramids when designing the gallery. It is the longest corbelled vault ever built, measuring 47 meters long and 8.6 meters high. The walls were made to taper inward, allowing for better distribution of weight. As a result, the ceiling measures just over a meter wide at its highest point. Though this construction technique is present in other pyramids, Few have the same precision and stability. While the space is visually dramatic, the gallery seemed to serve a practical function, though what exactly remains uncertain. Still, the wall design was undoubtedly meant to contribute to the stability of the structure, and its floor may have helped workers move the materials. A channel runs along the middle of the room. 
a movable floor originally rested in this central recess. The raised benches on either side are equipped with slots that may have been used to help position the granite blocking stones. At the end of the Grand Gallery is the entrance to the antechamber leading to the King's Chamber. Directly above, there is another narrower horizontal passage that connects to the top of the King's Chamber and allow the workers access to the weight relief rooms. The far end of the Grand Gallery leads to a small antechamber with a portcullis preventing access to the King's Chamber. The portcullis was composed of three separate granite slabs. They were designed to be lowered into place and seal the chamber after the burial of the King. The grooves dug out to hold the slabs in place are still clearly visible to this day. The elaborate locking system was composed of a series of grooves for the ropes and pulleys that dropped the stones into place like the notches on a key. For the purposes of the game, the team elected to remove the portcullis slabs in order to grant the player access to the king's chamber. In reality, workers would have backed out of the room after the funeral, lowering each slab into place behind them one at a time. Each of the three stones were smashed by looters centuries later, and evidence of their break-in is still evident. The King's Chamber is built entirely out of red granite. The King's Chamber measures 5.8 meters in height. It has an imposing cover of five stacked levels above, with granite beams weighing 25 to 40 tons each. The uppermost level is surmounted by a vault of stones, arranged in chevrons to bear the enormous structural load. As in the Queen's Chamber, two shafts extend out from the room towards the north and south faces of the pyramid. They measure nearly 64 meters until they are blocked by copper-handled granite plugs. Some experts in the culture of the Old Kingdom believe that the shafts were thought to lead the king's soul to the stars, with the incarnation of the pharaoh as the god Ra, represented by the northern well, and the god Horus by the southern well. There is a granite sarcophagus at the west end of the room, but it is the concealed construction inscriptions left by workmen on the roof's stones which verify this as the resting place of Khufu. The sarcophagus was recorded as being empty when it was discovered, and its design indicates that there was once a lid in place. It's possible that this sarcophagus is only a cenotaph in memory of the pharaoh, but was never actually meant to receive the body. Khufu's mummy was never found. It is hoped that as of yet undiscovered hidden rooms and shafts of the pyramid may provide an answer as to its location. Welcome to Jean-Pierre Houdin's Theories. The team wanted to provide players with a sense of exploration and discovery, particularly within the Great Pyramid. As such, a decision was made that the internal design of the monument in the game would reflect Jean-Pierre Houdin's theories. While the antechambers of the king's tomb have yet to be discovered, Houdin posits that this is merely due to a unique design 
placing the Pharaoh's tomb at the center of the pyramid. The entire tour you are about to take was designed along Houdin's hypotheses. While respecting Houdin's hypothesis as to the general layout of the antechambers, the team wanted the contents to enhance the game experience. In regular royal tombs, the antechambers were filled with all the material goods needed by the pharaoh in the afterlife. To support the feelings of discovery and awe, the art team created a unique and fantastical treasure in this second antechamber. Houdin theorized that the ascending corridor and the great gallery were used by the workers to haul hoist the heavy beams above the king's chamber. He called it the service circuit. The corridor you are in now was created by the team following Houdin's theory and is referred to as the noble circuit. It is through this corridor that the wooden sarcophagus containing the pharaoh's mummy would have been transported to its final resting chamber. With this structure in mind, one can easily assume that the pyramid's entrance would have been connected to the two antechambers. Modern research has revealed that a cavity might be located behind the north face chevrons of the pyramid. As such, the team chose to create this area for the player to explore. Here is where Houdin believes that the priests and nobles would have exited the pyramid after the burial ceremony. Many theories regarding the construction of the Great Pyramid rely on the usage of external ramps. However, Houdin believes an external ramp would have been too steep for the upper portion of the pyramid. This is why he posits that there were two ramps. An external ramp for about half of the height of the pyramid, which then became an internal ramp for the second half. Houdin's theory states that this internal ramp followed the sides of the pyramid in an ascending spiral pattern. A notch discovered in the edge of the Great Pyramid, known as Bob's Room, seems to support this theory. Located at the corners of each edge of the pyramid, these large rooms would have allowed workers to turn the stone by 90 degrees, allowing them to continue the ascent. The team chose to create rooms such as this one bringing Houdin's hypothesis to life. This long corridor was the first section of the ascending internal ramp. Through it, the blocks used to build the Great Pyramid would have been carefully moved upward, 
and then turned at each edge of the pyramid in order to continue their ascent. Though the team only created the main ramp for the game, Houdet posits that this ramp had two levels, allowing workers to return safely to the bottom thanks to an additional corbelled upper section. According to Houdet, the start of the inner ramp was located at the base of the southeastern face of the pyramid. This location would have been the junction point of the external and internal ramps. Below us, workers would have built the lower part of the pyramid with the external ramp before eventually switching to the internal ramp for the middle and upper sections of the pyramid. At that time in the process, they could have reused the material of the external ramp to fill the center of the pyramid, hauling the stones in through the internal ramp. Welcome to Pyramids of the Middle Kingdom. During the 
Middle Kingdom era, the powerful rulers of the 12th dynasty resumed the tradition of elaborate pyramidal tombs. For example, Amenemhat I built a funerary complex in Lisht, and Senusret II selected the Elahun site in the Fayum. Amenemhat II and Sesostris III, however, cast their favor towards Dashur. Amenemhat III built a pyramid there as well before moving to Hawara in the Fayum. The plundering of tombs in troubled times prompted the architects of the Middle Kingdom to devise increasingly complicated means of security during construction. As such, while the architectural plans of the Hawara Pyramid were simpler than the one at Dashur, the means used to protect it from looters were much more elaborate. Beyond the use of blind passages and concealed trap doors, the architects relied on a system of stone slabs, which were slid into place at the end of construction. These massive stone slabs were meant to permanently block the passageways leading to the funerary chambers. The kings of the 13th dynasty began building their pyramids at Mazguna, south of Dashur, then moved on to Fayum and Abydos. The kings of the 17th dynasty, however, satisfied themselves with crowning their cave tombs with small pyramids of raw brick. The kings of the 18th dynasty gave up the shape of the pyramid as a royal tomb entirely. They chose a mountain with a pyramidal shape in the Valley of Kings and dug their graves there. It was not until the Nubian pharaohs of the 25th dynasty that kings were once again buried under pyramidal tombs. In fact, today, the area of ancient Nubia, modern Sudan, contains a record number of 220 known pyramids to Egypt's 138. Despite their slow decline in use and quality, pyramids continued to fascinate all and sundry up to the Roman era. They remain to this day a symbol of the religious dedication of the pharaohs and the grandeur of ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. 